Okay, we are ready to start. Welcome back, everyone. It's good to see you all today. I'm looking forward to learning our Rashi for Tuesday, Tuesday being the third day of the week. And so we will learn a Rashi from the third Aliyah, from Shlishi. Um, just brought the, the Parsha up on my screen. You may be wondering why uh, I went back to the beginning of the Parsha. Um, but uh, the reason I'm going backwards is to go forwards, so to speak. If you listen to my drasha last week on uh, Parsha Slech Lecha, it spoke a lot about the interactions between Lot and Avraham. And we talked about the fact that Lot and Avram were side by side, really every step of the way in the development of the character of Avram and every important stage of his life. The Torah almost goes out of its way to point out how they're together. The Mepharshim point out that really uh, Avram perhaps was even training Lot to be his heir. He's treated more like a son than a nephew. And then, of course, the great split occurs as they come back from Mitzrayim after the Rav, after the famine, and they have Ruchush Gadol, they have great property, and they have to split apart uh, in terms of their territory. Avram wants to split apart because uh, he wants to stay close to Lot. He doesn't want fights to happen. He wants to maintain the level of relationship, but Lot clearly wants to go in a different direction. He goes towards the hedonism of Sidom, Anashim Ra'im. He seems to fit in with the character of the people of Sodom, he seems to exit from this relationship with Avram a little bit and go off on his own direction, not just geographically, but morally and in terms of his behavior as well. What I wanted to point out today in an interesting Rashi from today's Aliyah, uh, but putting it together also with an interesting Rashi from the first Aliyah this week, is that if you piece together all the Rashis, the picture of Lot is far from clear in terms of how he develops subsequent to the split with Avraham. We painted in the drasha a kind of clear picture. Avram goes this way, Lot goes this way, the end of the relationship, and it's over. And uh, Avram fails, so to speak, to influence Lot, who's closest to him, and yet is undeterred in his mission to go and influence others. But that's not altogether true. And there's an important insight in that as well. You do see reverberations of that message throughout our parsha, but you also see the opposite. For an example of reverberations of that message, of the split between Lot, how Chazal and Rashi and the Mepharshim continuously get on Lot's back to show how he's not like Avram anymore, how he's different than Avram, how he went on a different path than Avram, you'll see right from the beginning of the Parsha. Uh, as uh, the Pasuk says over here, Avram greets the three people that come to his tent, the three guests, Yukach Namiat Mayim Verachatsu Raglechem. He jumps up, he greets them, and he says, take a little bit of water and wash off your feet. And Rashi points out over here, Kasav were Shehem Araviim, Shemishtachavim Laavak Raglehem. He was worried that perhaps they were Ovde Avodazara. They were people who worshipped idols. And he wanted them to wash off their feet, Vihikpid Shalola Hachnis Avodazara Lebeso. And he was Makpid, he was careful to make sure they washed off their feet because he didn't want any Avak Avodazara in his tent. Now, the whole Allah discussion would it have been a problem if they had dust on their feet that had been worshipped for Avodah Zarah, and he brought it into the tent or not, would that have been a problem or not? Whatever. Whether it's actually a halachic problem, of course, this is all primat and Torah anyways, but whether that would have been an actual halachic problem, or Avram was just holding himself to a higher standard, whatever the case might be, Avram is makbid. He's very careful not to have that dust come into his home. And what does Rashi say? Avalot shelo hikbid hikdim lina l'rechitza sh'amar lahem vilinu Later in the Parsha, when Lot greets the guests in Sodom, he changes the order. He first says, Linu, come stay over, come sleep in my house. And then, He only offers them to wash their feet after they're already in the house. So Rashi catches Lot immediately, right from the beginning of the Parsha. Ah, oh, Avram's great. He's worried about Avazar, but Lot, just wait till you get later in the Parsha. Lot is not like Avram anymore. So that's consistent with the message of the drasha, but it's a little more nuanced than that. If we go to today's aliyah, in today's aliyah, by Yavo Shnei HaMalachim Sedom, Ba'erev Velot Yoshe Bishar Sedom, Vayar Lot, Vayakam Likrasam, Vayishtachu Apayim Arta. Before we get to that pasuk, Linu V'Rachatzu Raglechem, the pasuk which Rashi just referenced, in which he's not concerned about the dust of Avodah Zarah on their feet. Before we get to that, the pasuk says that he saw these two people enter Sidom, and he was sitting in the entry of Sidom, in the Shar Sidom. Vayar Lot Vayakam Likrasam. He sees them, and he gets up to greet them. And what does Rashi say on that pasuk? Vayar Lot. 
Mi base Avram Lamad Lechazer al Haorchem. He learned from Avram's house to go up and to greet the guests. He jumps up to greet them because he learned Hachnasus Orchim from Avram Avinu. So you see, this Rashi flies in the face of the next Rashi on the next Pasuk, which Rashi already told us in the beginning of the Parsha, which says, oh, no, no, Lot is not like Avraham. Lot is different. He's an Ovid of Zara, perhaps. He's a Russia like the people of Stan, but no. Before that, Rashi points out that he learned something from Avram. He internalized that nida, that trait of, of, of Hachnasas Orchim, and he continues to practice it even in the rishos of Sidom, even in the horrible place that he chose. It shows you a much more nuanced approach to Lot, and that follows through if you continue looking at the Rashis and the rest of the Parsha. And I think it's such an important lesson. When people go off in different directions in life, it, it's not a black or white. It's not an all or nothing proposal. It's not an all or nothing path. People are much more nuanced than that. And yes, he abandons certain things. And yes, he chooses a different path. And yes, we can catch him on this and that and the other thing. But it doesn't mean he wasn't influenced by Abraham. It doesn't mean he doesn't carry things forward into his life from Abraham. And so long as we realize that, we have A, a little bit more respect perhaps from Lot, for Lot, and B, uh, a little bit more of an appreciation of what influence we can have over other people. The, the um, postscript to the drasha after we hear of Avram's failure is for, perhaps for Avram to realize that he wasn't altogether a failure. And whenever you interact with someone, if you have a positive interaction, a positive influence, even if on the surface you see them go in a different direction and seem not to take that and grab that and hold on to that, you never know what kind of influence you had. You never know what kind of positive impact you have and what they carry forward into other pieces of their life. So hopefully we can recognize that and the nuance of Lot's character as well. I was asked in the uh, seriousness of the day, and a beautiful idea, uh, to perhaps end our Rashi today with a tefillah, a tefillah for our country as we go forward in this important historic day, uh, with the hope that uh, everything goes smoothly, with the hope that our country remains peaceful and uh, successful in every way. So we will recite together, uh, you can uh, follow along with me on the screen, the prayer okay. for the welfare of the government of the United States of America. And really, uh, for the people of the United States of America as well. Avinu Sheba Shemayim, Azor of Aret, Let's hope for a uh, peaceful, successful, wonderful day ahead and months ahead and years ahead uh, for ourselves, for our community, for our country, and really for the world. Thank you all so much. Robert, Robert, I have a Robert. question concerning the Rashi. Yes, please. Um, we went, when, uh, Thank Lot you for bringing for, us back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want to interrupt you during the your, your Rashi. Okay. Um, when, Lo, when it says Lot first invited them in and then washed his... his what could he have invited in, him in because he was afraid to show the, the people of Sodom of his hachnasis orchim. So for his own safety, he yeah. had to bring them in and then wash his their feet. I love it. I love it. It's a real limutzchus. Thank you. It's really trying okay. to find the positive. And you're absolutely right. You could be read that way for sure. Could have been a whole host of reasons why he changes the order. That wasn't Chazal's perspective. Strangely, you would expect them perhaps to be melamutzchus. Uh, to try to find the righteousness in Lot, but for whatever reason, that was not Chazal's perspective, but I think that's beautiful. Very, very okay. interesting. Thank, Thank you. you. Right, okay. Have a great day, everybody.